Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My friends, let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate worthily this most holy Eucharist to which God has called us to form this worshiping community. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We pray. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father. For Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue, to commit iniquity and dies. It is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live 
he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Remember your mercies, O 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 Lord. O Lord, make me know your ways. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love. For they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. In your merciful love, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies. Good and upright is the Lord. He shows the way to sinners. He guides the humble in right judgment. To the humble he teaches his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies. A reading of the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for one's own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 
My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? And they answered the first. And Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. R, B, G. Yeah. Ordinarily, you wouldn't know what that is, but this week, everybody knows Ruth Bader Ginsburg a universal reaction to her passing away, an appreciation of her qualities and what she stood for. But I think that the adulation and the appreciation comes from a deeper need in society for justice, for fairness. People want the justice system to work. And so we have heightened emotions when it comes to how it works and how it has not worked. And so in this framework of wanting justice, we hear the prophet Ezekiel saying that the Lord's way is not fair We have to think of last week's message, my ways are not your ways. And as high as the heaven is above the earth, so are my ways above your ways. And so we have a call today for a change of mind. But it is more than just a change of mind, it has to be a change of will and a change of heart because the Lord challenged the Pharisees in that they did not believe the message of John the Baptist and the message of John the Baptist was repent in the Greek metanoia change your mind, change your attitude change your life, stop what you're doing turn around and go in the right direction, complete radical change it is only that way that we are going to eliminate the inequity, the lack of justice, the unfairness in society. And not only that individuals like you and me have to change our way of thinking, but society itself has to change. Has to change to recognize that there is systemic injustice, is racial prejudice built into the system, there's inequality in education and in finance. That's not fair. Of course, we're saying it's not fair. 
And we're not complaining against God, we're complaining against humans who are in control and who have not changed their minds and who let either greed or self-importance or vain glory be their prime motivations. That's not fair. And it's hurting people. And we have to hear that hurt and we have to change it. Not only individually, but also collectively as a society. So change of mind, change of mindset, habit, stop inheriting that which is presumed to be okay in society and react against it. But there's a change of will. The first son, when asked to go out to the vineyard, said, I will not. And the second son, oh yeah, I will. And the question posed to the Pharisees was, which of the two fulfilled the father's will? And they said the first, well, actually the answer to that question, both and neither. Both fulfill the will and neither fulfill the will of the Father. And how can I justify that? Well, first, the first son who refused, of course, later on repented and changed and he did what the Father asked. So eventually, finally, he fulfilled the word of the Father. The second son fulfilled the will by saying, yes, I will go. What he did was he saved the family reputation. In that kind of society where everybody knew everybody else, you have to be careful that you don't tarnish your family, your father's reputation, your own good name. And if he said, oh, I don't want to go, and we surly and so on, that would look bad on the family. That would show dishonor and disrespect. So in that sense, he was sensitive enough to make it look good for society and save the name of the family. But neither fulfilled the will of, of the father because that second son didn't, although he at first proclaimed. And the first son didn't when he said no at the beginning. He did tarnish the family name, but eventually he did the will of the Heavenly Father. We pray every day in the Our Father, Thy will be done. We are children of the Father. We're not surly. We're not recalcitrant. We're not looking after our own ease and comfort but we're looking to fulfill the will of a merciful and loving Father. So yes, we're looking for justice, we're looking for fairness, meditating on it today. Change of mind, recognize the reality of injustice. Change of will, don't do things out of selfishness, laziness, or vainglory. But then the change of heart. The change of heart is basic and it's got to be built on love and it has to try to fulfill what St. Paul says in the second reading. Do nothing out of selfishness or vainglory, but here's the kicker. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves. I don't know if I can honestly say that. And late at night, I just wonder, do I really prefer and honor others, regard them as more important than myself? That's a challenge. That is the high standard that is set before us. And St. Paul says, you do this because of Jesus Christ. Have the same attitude that was in Jesus. And Jesus summed up the law Two commandments, love God with all your heart, soul, and might, and your neighbor as yourself. And regard others as more important than yourselves. 
a good thing to pray over as an examination before we go to sleep. But the same attitude that is in Christ Jesus, that he emptied himself, found to be in the form of human, that itself was a huge leap come down from heaven to become human, but being human still did not exercise the prerogatives of being the Son of God, but was willing to submit himself to death and not just ordinary kind of illness and pass away in silence on your deathbed, but to be actively persecuted, reviled, and condemned to an ignominious, torturous death. But that's what is presented before us because we are Christians, we follow Christ. And Paul is talking about the agape, Greek word for selfless altruistic love. Just as we use that Greek word metanoia for a complete change of mind and heart and repentance, we ask with that highest level of love without any self-interest, pure altruistic, following the example of Christ, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Just one announcement today that we have a second collection which is for our seminary in Dunwoody, St. Joseph's Seminary, a collection we usually take at this time of the year. So please be generous in your consideration. We now rise to profess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God guides the humble to justice and teaches them the way. And so in humility, we bring our needs before God. For the church, that the Holy Spirit may bind us with the same love, uniting us in heart, so that we may carry out God's will in the world today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders, that they may have the courage to do what is right and just, and even when it is not easy or popular, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For missionaries who spread the good news through word and action, that they may be kept safe from harm, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Jewish brothers and sisters, as they observe Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the holiest day of the year, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may humbly regard others as more important than ourselves, looking out for their interests and becoming the face of Christ for our neighbor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, especially those listed in the bulletin and the victims of the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends, all the departed, the victims of the virus, that they may be gathered into the eternal joy of their heavenly home. Especially do we pray for Catherine O'Neill, the special intention of this Mass. We pray to the Lord. And we now pause to include our own intentions.
O merciful God, remember your compassion as we struggle to do your will. Listen to the prayers we make here today, and in your kindness and goodness, answer us through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Christians, let us love one another as we share the true living bread. Jesus is our God and our brother. With his flesh and blood we are fed. Everyone who loves is born. is our life, God is love. We who break this bread are one body. We who share this cup all are one. Children of our Father in heaven, we are heirs with God's own Everyone who loves is born of God. Jesus is our life. God is love. Please rise as we pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you have loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You have set Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, the clergy, and the entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, his spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. It's through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We now lift up our minds, hearts, and voices to the Heavenly Father, using the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we now exchange a sign of welcome and of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace, grant us peace. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please rise as we pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, descend upon us and remain with us forever and ever. 
Amen. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Beautiful Savior, King of creation, Son of God and Son, Joy.